Hello, Coach Crab 127 here. We are continuing the tutorial of how to stream retro games on Twitch. In this video, we will go over the best settings to use in OBS Studio software. So the first thing you need to do is download OBS Studio. You want to type in OBS Studio download in Google and click on the first link that appears. Make sure you uh, choose your uh, operating system, Windows for me. And down here is something that's really important. Uh, you want to make sure that you download the 32-bit installer. Don't download the default. Make sure you are downloading this 32-bit installer right here. Very important. Okay, so once you have downloaded and installed OBS Studio, you want to open the software. <laughs> this is what the... Uh, this is what it looks like when you do a full desktop capture. Fun stuff. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to fix your stream settings. Okay, click on File and Settings. And we will go over the settings in each of these tabs so you can put on a quality show during your stream. We will start with General. And there's not much you will need to change here from the default settings. Just take a look at the settings that I have and make sure yours are similar. I need to make this window a little bit smaller. Let's see, no, still just a little bit smaller. There, much better. Okay, so as I scroll down, match up your settings with mine. If you have to, I'm not even sure if you need to change anything in this tab. So just take a look and see which boxes are checked and what, which settings are selected. Not much you need to change at all. Not much you need to do in general. This tab is not very important. Click on the next tab, Stream. Streaming type, you want Streaming Services. Service, you want Twitch. Server, um, it is recommended that you choose Auto for this setting. But if you want to, you can choose the streaming server that is closest to where you live. Uh, since we are streaming retro games, which don't take too much bitrate, you are probably not going to notice a significant difference picking different services. Stream key. This is really important. After you have made a Twitch account for yourself, you will want to go to twitch.tv and you will want to go to your dashboard. And in the left margin, you will want to go to Settings and click on Channel. And here is your stream key. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to click on Show, but uh, I am not going to do that. <laughs> That's a very bad idea. Don't ever show your uh, stream key to anybody. Uh, but when you're alone and you're not streaming, you can click on Show, and it will show you your stream key. You will want to copy your stream key and then you will want to paste it into here. So stream key is what allows you to stream under your specific username. You will not be able to stream under your name without your stream key. Before we do output, let's go to video first. Base canvas resolution is what you see on your OBS window on your computer. Output scaled resolution is the resolution that your viewers see. Currently I'm recording at 720p because the smaller text is hard to see if I downscale it. Most of the time I stream at 480p because my computer will sometimes drop frames and the stream will struggle just a bit if I go any higher. I don't have a very powerful computer so if you have a better computer than me feel free to stream at 720p. But with retro games a lower resolution is not that big of a deal. Downscale filter, make sure that uh, you have bicubic sharpened scaling 16 samples. Common frames per second value. Uh, retro games run at uh, 60 frames per second, but my computer cannot handle that. I always drop a ton of frames and it looks awful. My computer just gets overloaded and uh, you don't want that to happen. So I changed it to 29.97 frames per second. I find that my stream looks smoother 
when I do 29.97 as opposed to 30. Uh, there seems to be less flicker, but you can test it out and see what works best for you. Let's click on output now. For output, you want audio track to be 1, encoder x264, you want this box checked, rescaled output, once again remember I should like to stream at uh, 480p, so most of the time when I look in here it'll be 480p, rate control, you want CBR, bitrate, uh, for bitrate, you want a higher bitrate if you were streaming at a higher resolution. The highest resolution that you would want to do with retro gaming would be 720p at 50, or excuse me, at 60 frames per second. At that resolution, a bitrate of about 4,000 should be fine. The maximum bitrate that Twitch currently allows is 6,000, but uh, there's no reason to go over 6,000 anyway, unless you're streaming like. 4k at a thousand frames per second or something like that which is i don't even know if that's possible but anyway i, I use a bit rate of 1500 which is just right for 480p and 29.97 frames per second a keyframe interval you want it to be at two twitch is very particular about that a cpu usage preset you want it to be very fast profile you want main tune none and don't put anything in this box right here yeah, these settings right here, Twitch is pretty particular about, so make sure that you have these uh, numbers and settings selected, and you'll be fine. Let's click on recording now. Uh, type, you want standard. Uh, recording path, uh, select the folder that you want your recorded files to go to. You don't need this box checked. Uh, recording format, you can choose which type of uh, movies you want, to, what type of format you want your uh, recordings to be, FLV, MP4, MOV, whatever you choose or whatever your computer prefers. Uh, audio track, you want the first one selected. Encoder, use stream encoder. Rescale output, um, if this box is checked, uh, you will be recording at the lower resolution that you chose in the video tab earlier. Uh, remember, I stream at uh, 480p, and I record at 480p most of the time as well. Uh, but if you uh, want to record at a higher or a lower resolution than your stream, you can. Okay, let's click on audio now. Uh, audio bit rate, 192 or 160, it doesn't really matter. You can choose either one. You won't see much of a difference. And replay buffer, uh, just make sure that that box is unchecked. The next tab is audio. And once again, uh, we don't need to go over this in depth, really. Just take a look at the settings that I have right here. And you can match these settings up if you want to. Um, if you want to enable some kind of setting to where you can push to talk, meaning you have to hold down a button on the computer for the uh, viewers to hear you, you can do that. You can also enable a uh, push to mute, where uh, if you uh, are going to sneeze or something like that, you can push a button real quick to mute the uh, stream real quickly and uh, then when your sneeze or cough is complete or whatever you can push the button again to uh, um, make sure that uh, you are they can hear you again so that's one thing that you can do with uh, audio uh, hotkeys is the next tab I don't mess with hotkeys at all if you want to you can you can look them up and see exactly what it is but uh, this is just something that I don't worry about advanced settings once again uh, don't really want to change much in here. Just look at the settings that I have. Nothing really uh, important to go over here. Just uh, look at the settings that I have and make sure that yours match up. So let's just take a look real quickly. Go through these nice and slowly. Make sure you have these uh, boxes checked or unchecked that you need. And we'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. So you can see the rest of it. Okay, so we are done with OBS Studio settings, but we need to download more software. To do that, I'm going to give you a URL link. You want to go to this website right here. Uh, I have included the link in the video description for your convenience. And this website gives instructions on how to download the driver for your GV USB 2 capture card. It also tells you how to set up a second recording software that you will need, which is called Amorec TV. These instructions are more than adequate, so I will not be making a tutorial video on how to set up Amorec TV. Just follow the instructions carefully step by step on this site, 
and we'll pick up the next step once you get Amarec TV ready. So the next uh, video in this tutorial series will help you capture the Amarec TV uh, on your OBS Studio window so you can begin to stream on Twitch. I hope you found this part of the tutorial informative and user friendly. Uh, thanks for watching and we are getting closer and closer to being able to stream.